The video I want to share with you today has to do with calculating the volume of concrete stairs. And the practical use of this, of course, is you've formed up your stairs and now you need to order some concrete for them. And in a, in a prior video, I had calculated the formwork for this set of stairs right here up in the corner. And um, now I want to share with you the process for calculating the volume of the stairs so we know how much to uh, a concrete order. First of all, I want to point out that some of these dimensions are in millimeters. The unit of rise right here, the unit of run, and the soffit thickness or the throat are all in millimeters. All these other dimensions are in meters. And I make no apologies for this because very often we do our calculations in millimeters for unit rise and unit run. And then when we go to calculate the uh, volume of something in these, for example, these concrete stairs, the uh, the number will will come out as cubic meters. So uh, let's get started with this. Uh, the first step is going to be calculating the average thickness of the stair. And so I want you to imagine that we're just going to have a line through here like this. So we're going to draw it from top to bottom, sort of like this and all the way to the top. I know that's very rough, but I'm just saying. And we're going to do a little calculation here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the unit of rise, 173.9. I'm going to divide it by 2. And then I'm going to add it to the throat thickness, 200 millimeters. And the purpose of this is if you notice here, like at one of these junctions, taking half a unit of rise, is going to be like knocking this little nub off and sort of putting it back into this space right here. That's the idea behind taking the unit rise, dividing it by two, and then adding this guy here, this throat thickness, uh, to come up with an average thickness. And when I'm talking about average thickness, I'm talking about uh, in this direction here, like that. Because we're gonna take this average thickness multiply it by the length of the stair, and then we're going to multiply it by the width of the stair. So first of all, we're going to do this calculation. And I've done it uh, previous uh, for you. And I'm, it actually turned out to be 287.0 millimeters. And I'm going to convert that into meters right away, 0.287. So that's going to be our first step with this. And I'm going to uh, just, I'm going to leave that on there. I'm going to take note of, I'm just going to leave that on there. I'm going to erase all this other stuff so we don't sort of get lost along the way. So next step will be, this is the uh, average depth. Right there. That's going to be that guy. And then I'm going to figure out how long this stair is. And now I'm going, to, I'm going to sort of show you a different line. And this line is going to go sort of right through, like, through this point. What I want to do is I want to calculate the length of that line. And as a result, I can find out the length of the stairs. And so the process for this is going to be um, actually, you know what, I'm going to go backwards a little bit here. I want you to imagine a line right through here, right through this line of flight. Line of flight, one of the terms we use to describe an imaginary line through the nosings of each one of the treads. And I want to figure out the length of that line. That's going to give me the length of the stair. Now, the easy way to do this is to figure out the distance between these points here and then just multiply by the number of risers and so the process for doing that is to take the unit of rise 0.1739 and I've converted this to meters right away so that I end up with an answer in meters 0.1739 squared plus 0 0.2920 squared and I hope you see what I'm up to here. Basically, I'm taking the unit rise and unit run, and I'm completely ignoring that nosing. You see how these are sloped a little bit? 
because honestly, the little bit that that difference that that makes is is meaningless to me. 0.1739 and 0 0.2920. Hopefully, you remember that this here is the hypotenuse, and this the formula for finding the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle right here is uh, Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, or a squared plus b squared root is equal to c. That's the formula I'm following with this guy. So here it is up here, and when I do the calculation, it ends up being 0 0.340. 0 0.340. And then I'm going to multiply by the number of risers, which is 11. And I come up with, uh, worked it up beforehand, 3.74 meters. 3.74 meters. And this is stair length. Sort of running out of some room there. Stair length, 0.374. I want you to take note um, right away that... This line is similar, not just similar, but actually it's exactly the same as the length of this line from top to bottom. This is going to be important down the road here as we do some calculations for the landing. But for now, we know the length of our stair. Perfect. The next step now is calculating the volume of the stair. I'm going to get rid of some of this extra stuff. Going to get rid of that guy and some of this stuff here, those little dots. Get rid of that. Just so I have a little more room up here to do some calculations. Perfect. So I found out the average depth, which is 0.287. My stair length is 3.74. And hidden over here, I say that the stair width is 1.3 meters. So to calculate volume, I obviously need three numbers. And if I multiply these three numbers together, I end up with 1.395. 1.395 cubic meters. And where can I hide that number so it doesn't get lost? Put it up here. Stairs. 1.395. Perfect. And now next step is calculating the volume of the landing so that we can add it to the stairs. And here's something kind of goofy. You notice that I had drawn a line through this point to figure out the length of the stairs. And it comes up here. What we're going to do with this landing is because I sort of included this bit up here, and it's going to be hard to imagine, but this, since I came up to this point here, I'm going to have to exclude it from the landing. And I know that this isn't a precise calculation, but it's going to be close enough. Just like I left off that nosing, that little taper there. Yes, I left it off. It's not going to be perfect, but really in the world of ordering concrete and the sort of waste that you get with that, it makes no difference at all. So, because I came to that point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the landing length, 1.892. I'm going to subtract one unit of rise. This guy here, minus 0.292. That's this distance right here. I'm going to take it off so that I'm left with this landing like that. And this guy here is equal to, uh oh, I don't know what that's equal to. I'm going to have to calculate that quick. I didn't include that in my original calculation. I just went ahead and did it. 1.892 minus 0.292 equals 1.6. 1.6. Now the thickness of the landing is right there. Here he is. Right there. So I'm going to go the length of the landing, 1.6, times 
times 0.27 for the thickness of the landing times the width of the stair, remember, is 1.3 times 1.3 width of stair right there. That's the width of the stair. And that is equal to 0.562 equals 0.562. Perfect. So landing volume is equal to 0.562. I'm going to add these together. 1.395 plus 0.562 is equal to 1.957 cubic meters and that's very close to the exact um, volume of these stairs certainly it's close enough to order concrete obviously depending on your situation you may want to order more for you know waste or maybe you're having to prime a pump I honestly don't know anyway roughly two meters two cubic meters of concrete for these stairs hey thanks very much for uh, listening in, hit that subscribe button uh, to stay up to date with some of my other videos. Thank you very much.